so the associated prominent structures because when we talk about this uh, uh, series uh, uh, you know the series corresponding to the counting sequences of uh, objects a right, combinatorial objects then we have to also uh, give some meaning to what happens to the sum what happens to the product uh, etc so uh, we will do that uh, in uh, soon enough but for the time being so we have this as a sum and then similarly we define the product so the product of two generated functions f and g uh, is f dot g of x which is summation n greater than or equal to 0 summation i equal to 0 to n f i into g n minus i x raised to n okay so the coefficient of x raised to n is summation i equal to 0 to n f i into g n minus i now if you think about it it will be uh, kind of clear because if you take the product of this infinite uh, uh, series one can see why uh, this should be the coefficient right so let us see why so let us say that uh, we are multiplying these two uh, series but now since we are multiplying uh, you know series which are like kind of you know extensions of polynomials uh, we we have only uh, you know non negative uh, powers right exponents are non negative now if i have a non negative exponents when i take the product uh, the exponent can only increase it cannot decrease right so therefore uh, if I am going to look at the coefficient of x raised to n for f x at n, I never have to look at uh, you know terms whose coefficients are going to be larger than uh, I mean uh, terms whose uh, you know exponent is going to be larger than uh, larger than n, right? Because it is never going to contribute to the coefficient of x raised to n in the product. So what we can do uh, is to just look at what are the terms whose degree is uh, less than or equal to uh, n. So we have the first uh, n plus 1 times which is f0, f1, x plus etc, fn, x raised to n. These are the times where the degree is less than or equal to uh, n. And then similarly, the second series again, uh, the degree is less than or equal to n. So I have gn, x raised to n, gn minus 1, x raised to n minus 1, etc, g0. These are the n times. Now, when we take the product, of course, you know, we are going to multiply each term with each of the other terms in the second uh, sum, right, second series. So, we are going to look at where are, uh, you know, which cases we will get x raised to n, right, from this product. So, we can clearly see that if I take x raised to uh, k from one of these terms, right, let's say I take fk x raised to k, right. Right, something like fk x raised to k I take, then uh, since I have x raised to k, to make it x raised to n, I have to take x raised to n minus k, right? And uh, the only term that uh, I can multiply it with is in the second series, which is uh, g n minus k x raised to n minus k, right? So, uh, now we can see why, uh, you know, the pre previous sum makes sense. So, I have f0. Then I have uh, to take uh, uh, gn because I need x raised to n. If I take f1, I have to take gn minus 1 because I have to get uh, x into xn minus 1, which will be x raised to n. Similarly, I have to take fn x raised to n and g0 because x raised to n, the degree must be equal to x raised to n, right? So, therefore, I have this uh, n plus 1 times in the sum, right, which are going to be uh, summation i equal to 0 to n, fi into gn minus i. Right, so these are the uh, uh, n plus one times, and their sum is going to give me uh, uh, the coefficient of x raised to n in the products, and that is precisely what we have written. So that is our product of uh, two formal power series. Of course, we can extend this to more number. I mean, you can just take the uh, thing and do it uh, easily. Now, as we mentioned, the formal power series forms uh, a ring, right? It has a ring structure. So, the k, uh, you know, uh, from which we take the coefficient can be a ring of coefficients. Now, the, the ring of coefficients, uh, we usually consider it to be a field because it will give better, prop nice properties for us. Uh, and uh, for most of the purposes, we will assume that it contains, uh, contains q, right? So, we will take only q, r or c. 
Uh, when it does not contain Q, we have to uh, assume some other, uh, you know, or we are looking at other type of fields. Uh, we have to look at uh, uh, some other, uh, you know, uh, we have to be more careful. That is a, we will not go into detail why. Yeah. Now, we denote by K double square bracket X to denote the ring of formal power series. Because K square bracket X, uh, we use to denote the uh, polynomial ring, right, over K, right. So, K, K is a field, K uh, square bracket X is usually used to denote the one variable uh, uh, polynomial uh, ring uh, over the field K, right. Now, <laughs> what is this uh, ring of formal power series? So, as we, as we know, uh, the power series is in one to one correspondence with uh, an infinite sequence right so basically a power series is a, a sequence uh, of elements from uh, uh, k itself right so therefore basically what we are going to uh, look at is the infinite sequence uh, k raised to n right which is basic uh, which is the uh, you know which is the functions uh, from n to k right so k raised to n is the set of all functions from n to k and 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 this uh, is precisely what uh, we are talking about uh, uh, when we say k uh, double uh, bracket x now to represent this uh, what we are going to do is to you know this take this infinite sequence we are going to write it as summation fn x raised to n right this is only, uh, you know, uh, a way to represent what we really want to work with is, uh, is this, right? So this is what we are going to really work with, right? This is basically the set of all functions from, I mean, you know, this is basically a function from uh, n to k. And uh, likewise, uh, given any such uh, infinite sequence, we associate uh, associate the uh, series right and then uh, you know and, and this series will give you uh, the variable x right and therefore it will give you the ring of uh, uh, formal power series right? so what we are actually working with is the uh, infinite uh, sequences of uh, k now so as we mentioned before the sum and product uh, of this uh, you know infinite sequences or uh, the ring uh, elements is uh, asked uh, before summation uh, fn x raised to n plus summation gn x raised to n is summation fn plus gn x raised to n and uh, product of these two is summation uh, overall n summation k equal to 0 to n fk into gn minus k x raised to n now one uh, thing to note is that uh, uh, the the usual analytical properties like uh, you know exponential uh, exponentiation right uh, logarithm uh, all these can be extended to uh, you know uh, the formal power series uh, uh, ring also now uh, we whenever it makes sense right uh, we will we will uh, not uh, go into the details of this at the moment uh, for advanced courses we one can think about this uh, then another point I want to note is that suppose you suppose you look at uh, look at the field element, uh, right? Uh, so some element in K, right? A is uh, an element in the field K. Now suppose I, I represent this field element as again an infinite sequence, right? So for example, I can represent this as the first element is A and everything else is zero, right? So then I will get the constant, right? Because first time is the you know x raised to zero, which is constant, and then all the other powers of x uh, has coefficient uh, 0. Therefore, I get the constant a. So, if I represent a as this infinite sequence, where the uh, first time, I mean, the a, every other time other than the first time is 0, then I can, I can see uh, that, uh, you know, the, you know, the polynomial uh, ring k of x is basically contained in uh, uh, the ring of, uh, in the formal power series ring, right? Because we can just associate now uh, the polynomial ring, right? So a polynomial ring, uh, we have a finite uh, uh, attempts, right? So the, this finite uh, set, what we do uh, after the remaining, we, we can put zeros to make an infinite sequence, right? 
and then uh, these vectors can be infinite vectors now and therefore we can see that they are basically sitting inside the uh, larger uh, uh, formal power series ring and uh, if you if you just look at the if you just look at the uh, addition and uh, scalar multiplication right so i can define now the scalar multiplication as multiplication uh, by the field element uh, where the field element is represented by this uh, sequence a00 etc so i have the corresponding uh, series right summation uh, uh, you know overall this thing right a plus uh, you know everything else is uh, zero right so then i can define the product of these two uh, power series and this this is basically the product by the field element and this will be the scalar uh, multiplication right so now i have uh, the scalar multiplication and the uh, and the sum one can one can show that uh, there is a vector space structure uh, over k for the uh, power series ring and then once you extend it with the product uh, it will uh, lose some nice properties and it will become uh, just a ring so uh, well we will not discuss any of this further so we will let us try to see how to use uh, these things in uh, in our combinatorics uh, so a uh, final word uh, that we can define other operations like uh, you know derivative and all so how do we define the derivative so the formal uh, derivative right of the formal power series so again keep in mind that we are looking at formal derivative right not the actual derivative we will not worry about whether it is continuous or like whether it is uh, uh, you know uh, uh, whether we uh, we can differentiate you know differentiable etc when we try to look at uh, this kind of thing so therefore we will uh, we will define the uh, derivative the usual way without worrying about uh, the analytical property so d by dx of summation fn x raised to n is a time by time derivative right summation n fn x raised to n minus 1 right n greater than equal to 1 n fn x raised to n minus 1 which is the usual time by time derivative of the uh, power series so this uh, we define here also but we say it's a formal derivative now so uh, uh, you know as an example to the things that we uh, learned uh, so far i am going to prove the following uh, result right uh, that summation uh, n greater than equal to 0 n plus 1 x raised to n is equal to 1 by 1 minus x square now uh, i am going to give three different proofs for this okay so we will use three different methods to prove this first uh, let us you use the thing that we just learned immediately before that is the derivative right so i know that the derivative of 1 by 1 minus x is 1 by 1 minus x whole square right so d by dx of 1 by 1 minus x e is 1 by 1 minus x whole square so i know that 1 by 1 minus x is basically the sequence summation uh, x raised to n now let us take the uh, time by time derivative of summation x raised to n right so i i, I take derivative on the left as well as uh, on the right hand side so the differentiation of the lhs gives summation n uh, x raised to n minus 1 n uh, is greater than equal to 1 right uh, by the uh, definition of the derivative and uh, you know on the right hand side i have this function 1 by 1 minus x uh, whose uh, derivative is 1 by 1 minus x whole square now what is the summation n greater than equal to 1 uh, n into x raised to n minus 1 if i shift the uh, index by 1 to the left so n uh, you know i say is n greater than equal to 0 then uh, i have to look uh, start from n plus 1 onwards so i have summation n greater than equal to 0 n plus 1 x raised to n this is identical and therefore i have the proof right summation n plus 1 x raised to n is 1 by 1 minus x whole square so this is the first proof now let us look at another way to prove this okay so we we have defined you know uh, the product of the analytic function before so let us try to use that so i know that 1 by 1 minus x whole square is 1 by 1 minus x into 1 by 1 minus x so we know 1 by 1 minus x is the uh, uh, series summation x raised to n uh, with the generated function let's say of x and similarly i say b of x is the uh, same uh, series uh, summation x raised to n so the product of these two series is uh, by definition it is summation n greater than equal to 0 
then summation k equal to 0 to n a i into b n minus i. This is the definition, right? That is the coefficient of x raised to n. Now, what is summation a i into b n minus i where k equal to 0 to n? I mean, uh, sorry, this is not uh, i. This is k. Okay, I can say i equal to 0 to n minus. Right. Summation i equal to 0 to uh, n, a i into b n minus i, uh, x raised to n. Right. So, what is the coefficient uh, uh, of x raised to n here? Well, a i uh, is the, you know, coming from the constant sequence x raised to n, the coefficients are all 1. So, therefore, a i is 1. And similarly, b n minus i is also 1. Right. So, therefore, a i into b n minus i is 1 into 1, which is 1. So, I am going to add i equal to 0 to n, everything is 1. Right. So, how many times are here? There are exactly n plus 1 times. So, n plus 1 once if I add, I will get n plus 1. So, the coefficient of x raised to n is n plus 1. So, I get summation n plus 1 x raised to n. Right? This is the uh, product. And that product is precisely 1 by 1 minus x whole square because it is a of x into b of x. Okay. <coughs> Now I am going to give a third proof and this time we want to use the uh, generalized binomial function. Okay. So 1 by 1 minus x whole square I can write as 1 minus x whole ratio minus 2. Right? So 1 by 1 minus x whole square is 1 minus x whole ratio minus 2. Minus 2 is a real number. So I have minus 2 choose n. right? And uh, summation minus 2 choose n and then minus x whole ratio n right? which is, uh, which is uh, 1 plus x because 1 minus x. And minus 2 choose n. What is minus 2 choose n? It is minus 2 into minus 3, uh, etc. Uh, minus of n plus 1 divided by n factorial. Now, on the top, you have minus 1 whole ratio n times n plus 1 factorial. And uh, cancelling n factorial, I will get minus 1 whole ratio n into n plus 1. Now, I substitute it here, minus 1 whole ratio n, n plus 1 and minus x whole ratio n. Right. So, uh, what is uh, what is uh, this? This is minus uh, one whole ratio n into minus x whole ratio n is x raised to n. So, I have summation n plus one into x raised to n. So, these are three different proofs of the same identity, right? Uh, which we proved using the techniques uh, that we have learned. Okay, now we want to look at uh, some applications of uh, you know this formal power series that we have learned, and uh, uh, one of the places where we can use is to is to uh, is to use uh, this to solve uh, recursion relations, right? Right. So recursive uh, equations. So what is a what is a recursion relation? So we we already saw this before. Uh, so, we have some, uh, let us say, unknown quantities, right, say a1, a2, etc., uh, uh, you know, uh, it is a sequence of unknown quantities, right, unknown numbers, let us say. Now, we want to represent, let us say, a, a n, right, uh, as a, so when we say uh, a n is uh, given as a recursive formula, it is basically an expression of the following form, that is, a n is written as a function of uh, the previous uh, values, right, of a i, which is a zero, a one, etc., a n minus one, and possibly also of n. Okay, so a n can be written as a function of n and the values that has appeared before. And you may not have to use all of them. Maybe some of them uh, is fine, right? I can write a n as a function of just n minus one, right, a n minus one, or I can just write as a function of n and uh, uh, a n minus one and a n minus two, right? So these are possible. So, if I can write a n as a function of these previous values, then we say it is a uh, recursive formula for, uh, for a n. Now, <coughs> uh, we, we usually uh, will also be given some initial condition because, you know, when we have uh, a n is written as, you know, the previous times, we need to see what are these 
unknowns in the you know at least the beginning uh, few times right? for example what is a0 right if i if i don't know a0 or a1 whatever then uh, i may not be able to really uh, you know so when i when i go back i will have a trouble because once i reach a0 uh, you know an in terms of let's say a0 and something if i don't know what is a0 i cannot do anything so therefore, uh, some initial conditions are basically uh, some non-recursive expressions for A0, etc. Right? So A0 and whatever is required, uh, some few times in the beginning will be given to you. Uh, and uh, this uh, completes the, uh, completes the uh, recursion formula. And then we can use the recursion to compute the later values. So that is the idea of recursion. Now, the problem with recursive formula is that if I want to find out the... Uh, you know, uh, 10,000 time, right? Uh, or like uh, 2,549 time, then I have to compute all the previous value, right? Up to 2,400 and uh, I don't know what was I saying, 48, right? So uh, all the previous times I might have to compute before I can find out what is uh, uh, this AN. Now, this may be an unnecessary work, right? Because uh, often, you know, it is the case that we only need to know what is the uh, value uh, of, uh, let's say, uh, A uh, 10,000, right? After 10,000 steps, what has happened? That's what we want to know. But why are we finding out all the previous uh, uh, 9,999 uh, values, right? We don't really need them. So, uh, to do away with this kind of work, one can try to use uh, to put this uh, recursion formula and then try to come up with a nice, uh, nice function to represent uh, a. And and for that, uh, these methods that we are going to uh, learn from the power series, uh, formal power series, will be very useful. So let us see uh, some example with some definition. So we want to solve a recurrence relation. Okay. So the first problem we want to look at is the following. So let us say that there are five uh, people, uh, you know, start a new religion. Okay. So what they do is that they start wearing blue t-shirts all the time. And then they said, okay, we believe in the blue goddess. Now, what does uh, this goddess say that? So she says that all the worshippers must wear blue t-shirts. And uh, if they don't do that, they will not get heaven, right? They will not get entry to heaven. Every day, what the what the devotees do is that uh, you know they spend uh, time to spread the word, right? They will basically try to convert other people to their religion. So they will convince uh, others to join them. So let us assume that they convince two others every day, right? And uh, once they convince, they immediately join the religion uh, and start wearing the blue t-shirts. And the next uh, morning onwards, they start uh, spreading the uh, religion, right? Again. Uh, so, what we will also assume that uh, every day one person will stop believing in right? So Now, after n days, we want to know how many people are there in the religion, right? So, we want to know only what happens after, let's say, n is equal to 100 or n is equal to 70, right? So, how, after these many days, how many people are there in the religion? Now, can you form a recursive uh, formula for this from the given information, right? So, we have given all the information required. Now, uh, a nice exercise will be to form uh, yourself a recursive formula. So, we can start assuming that an denotes the number of devotees after n days. So, then what is a recursive formula for an? Okay, so you think about it uh, for some time and then uh, uh, continue. So, what is uh, given to us is that uh, you know, five people start wearing a uh, t-shirt. So therefore, initially, there are five people. So therefore, A0 is five, right? So this is very clear. Now, since there are uh, exactly five people uh, in, in the first day, they start uh, spreading the religion to two others, right? So by the evening, they must have converted, each of them converted uh, uh, two, so therefore, 10 more people. So 10 plus uh, five, which is 15 people have been converted after the end of the day. Now, we know that every day one person will stop believing, so therefore one person will lose his belief by the end of the day again. 
So how many people will be uh, there in the next day morning? Next day morning there will be exactly 14 people, right? So this uh, you can see and then uh, it tells us something else, right? So we can now form the recursion relation as follows. We know that if there are exactly, uh, you know, let's say a n people or a n minus one people uh, at the morning, right? Then by the end of the day, how many people will uh, be there? Each of the a n person will uh, convince, right? Uh, twice that many people. So I will get two times a n more uh, believers. So this will, will make it three times a n, I mean, a n minus one, right? Three times a n minus one. And then uh, one person will lose belief. So therefore it is three times a n minus one minus one. So end of the day, right? End of the n minus one today, I have three times uh, a n minus one minus one persons. Now the next day morning, that is, which is a n is three times a n minus one minus one. So therefore I have a recursion relation for a n. And the initial condition is that A0 is 5, right? So that is where we start. And as we computed, A1 is 14. Now we can clearly uh, see what is A2 because it is 3 times 14 minus 1, which is 42 minus 1, 41. And then therefore we have the counting sequence, right? Associated counting sequence, the number of devotees after uh, you know, n days is An is equal to 5, 14, uh, uh, 41, etc. right? So, so we have the counting sequence. So in, in this case, we can associate a uh, power series, right? So I can say now 5 plus 14x plus 41x square plus etc is my corresponding power series. So I have done that. So I have, I have written a of x is equal to summation a n x raised to n, which is equal to 5 plus 14x plus etc. Now I want to call uh, this uh, with a new name. So I'm going to define that. Suppose we are given a sequence of real numbers f0, f1, f2, etc. Then the formal power series f of x defined to be summation fn x raised to n is called the ordinary generating function of the sequence fn. Now, why this is called ordinary? Uh, it will be clear when we uh, see that there are other types of generating functions. Okay? Uh, but for the time being, we will just say generating function for this, and most of the time, uh, you know, it will be clear we are looking at ordinary general function so uh, often we can also write ogf right uh, as a, a initials of o g and f uh, to denote uh, ordinary generative function and uh, 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 so the, when we say a generative function uh, you know in this part of the lecture what we mean is the ordinary generative function now so ordinary generative function is just the power series and if you can write it as a function uh, all the better. Right? So what our idea is to try to write this uh, power series as a function and then uh, if we can succeed uh, we can use that to uh, do other uh, operations with that. So let us see whether we can write our uh, series right uh, uh, summation uh, you know 5 plus 14x plus 41x square plus etc as a nice function right and then from that can we find a formula for a. So for that, uh, we want to try to use the method of uh, generative functions. So let us do this, right? So we have a of x is equal to summation a n x raised to n. This is this is something uh, that we have, right? And uh, uh, and we have a n. Uh, the recursion, uh, recursion relation is a n is equal to three into a n minus one minus one. Uh, we also have the initial condition a0 is 5, right? Now, uh, an x raised to n is the, uh, uh, you know, so what I am going to do is that I take this uh, recursion relation, multiply with x raised to n on both sides of the equation and then add them, okay, for every n. So, an x raised to n is equal to Right, I multiply on the x raised to n uh, with the right side also, right? 3 into a n minus 1 into x raised to n minus 1 into x raised to n. Now, what does this uh, give us? So, this uh, gives us 
you know, when you sum over all n, I get summation n uh, greater than or equal to 1 because I am looking at a n minus 1 here. So, uh, because we start from a 0, I need to make sure that summation uh, takes care of this uh, index also, right? So, therefore, I sum from n greater than or equal to 1, a n x raised to n is equal to 3 into summation n greater than or equal to 1, a n minus 1 uh, x raised to n minus summation uh, x raised to n, right? Now, what is on the LHS? We have uh, we have summation a n x raised to n except the first term, right? Which is uh, n equal to zero. So the first term n equal to zero is a zero, and uh, a zero is equal to five. That we know, right? So therefore, using that, we can write this as basically a of x, right? From the star equation star, I only miss the first term. That is a of x minus five. So that is our uh, our uh, uh, LHS on the RHS. We have summation uh, a n minus 1 into x raised to n, which is actually, you know, a n minus 1 should come with x raised to n minus 1. So I can take 1 x outside. So if I take 1 x outside, I get 3 x times summation uh, n uh, greater than equal to 0 uh, a n x raised to n, right, which is uh, 3 x i of x. So therefore, I get uh, uh, 3 x i of x. And similarly, on the last one, I know that it is summation x times, uh, you know, 1 by 1 minus x. So, it is x by 1 minus x. So, now I have a nice uh, uh, equation with uh, a of x and uh, x. So, I can now write a of x in terms of x. So, how do we do that? I take uh, all the uh, terms with a of x to one side. And then uh, I get, uh, I get, uh, I get uh, a of x into 1 minus 3x is equal to 5 minus uh, x by 1 minus x, right? This is what uh, I will get. So, 5 will go to there, 5 minus x by 1 minus x, I get uh, a of x into 1 minus 3x. So, therefore, a of x is equal to the RHS divided by 1 minus 3x, which is 5 by 1 minus 3x minus x by 1 minus 3x into 1 minus x. Now, what we want to find is a n, right? This is what we started with. Now, we know that a n is the coefficient of x raised to n in the expansion of a of x. Whatever is a of x, if you expand it as a series, look at the coefficient of x raised to n, that is going to be a n, right? Because we defined a x as summation a n x raised to n. Now, we know a of x is uh, now written as 5 by 1 minus 3 x minus this time. Now, if I know the coefficient of x raised to n in, 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 you know, in this, uh, each part, right? For uh, uh, you know, coefficient of x raised to n from here and coefficient of x raised to n from here, then their difference is going to be the coefficient of x raised to n by the uh, rule of uh, uh, addition, right? So, from the first term, we can uh, immediately get the coefficient of x raised to n, right? So, we because we know that 1 by 1 minus 3x is basically. Uh, summation 3 raised to n x raised to n. So I get 5 by 1 minus 3x is 5 into summation 3 raised to n x raised to n. So the coefficient of x raised to n from that is 5 into 3 raised to n, right? That is the coefficient of x raised to n. But now that is only for the from the first part. Now the second part we need to find. But the second part is not uh, as a simple form. Uh, it is a product of two uh, such form, right? such types. But now, how do you do this? We don't know uh, how to work with this. So, therefore, we need to do some more work to simplify this. So, the second term and needs a little more work. So, from the first term, we get the coefficient 5 into 3 raised to n. We will use it later. So, now let us work with the second term. So, there are several uh, ways to work with the second term. And what we are going to look at now is called the method of partial fractions. So, what we do is to write uh, this as x by 1 minus 3x into 1 minus x as alpha by 1 minus x plus beta by 1 minus 3. So now I want to solve for alpha and beta. What I do is just do cross multiplication, right, the usual uh, procedure. So I get x is equal to alpha into 1 minus 3x plus beta into 1 minus x uh, over 1 minus x into 1 minus 3x. 
uh, this i can uh, write as right uh, alpha so the uh, you know uh, the right hand side as uh, uh, as uh, alpha uh, into alpha into 1 minus 3x plus beta into uh, 1 minus x uh, is alpha plus beta into uh, minus x into 3 alpha plus beta right Uh, yeah, so I, I have to write x by 1 minus, so this is something which I miss, right, x by 1 minus uh, x into 1 minus 3x, right. This is equal to uh, this, right, so because uh, here I have just uh, done the, uh, uh, this. So now, uh, now because the denominators are the same, uh, I can compare the coefficients of, uh, or, or, or multiplying this, I can, I can, I can see that. Uh, I I get alpha plus beta minus x into 3 alpha plus beta in the denominator and on the left hand side the denominator is x. But now this I can see is basically a polynomial identity, right? So I have, but now it's a formal polynomial identity and therefore uh, the coefficients of the corresponding terms, right? The like terms of the same degree terms must be the same. But what is the coefficient of, uh, you know, the constant term? which is uh, the constant term is zero on the left side. So therefore alpha plus beta must be zero. Similarly, the constant of X is one. So therefore three alpha plus beta must be equal to one. Uh, minus three alpha plus beta must be equal to one. And once we have this, we can immediately solve for alpha and beta. We will get alpha equal to minus one over two and beta is equal to one over two, right? By just taking these two uh, linear equations. Now, once I have this, I can write x by 1 minus 3x into 1 minus x as uh, x as, uh, as uh, 1 by 2 into 1 by 1 minus 3x minus 1 by 2 into 1 by 1 minus x. So therefore, I get 1 by 2 into summation 3 raised to n x raised to n minus 1 by 2 into summation x raised to n. Oh, this is basically summation uh, 3 raised to n minus 1 by 2 x raised to n. So the coefficient of x raised to n from the second term is uh, minus of uh, 3 raised to n uh, minus 1 by 2, right? So the coefficient of x raised to n in A of x is the sum of the first term and the second term, which is 5 into 3 raised to n minus 3 raised to n minus 1 by 2. Now, what is this? This is precisely the term uh, an, right? The nth uh, term, which is the number of devotees after n days, right? So, an is basically 5 into 3 raised to n minus 3 raised to n minus 1 by 2. Now, let us verify whether uh, what we calculated, right? The formula for an uh, as, uh, as true. So, let us say that n is equal to 0. n is equal to 0, I will get 5 uh, into 1 minus uh, uh, 1 minus 1 by 2 which is uh, 5 itself. So a0 is 5 and what is a1? a1 is uh, a1 is uh, uh, 14 uh, we know but let us verify uh, when n is equal to 1 I get 5 into uh, 3 which is 15 minus 3 raised to uh, n which is 3 minus uh, 1 which is 2 by 2 which is 1 so 15 minus 1 which is 14. Then what is uh, A3? A3, uh, no, uh, A2, right? Uh, this is A2. A2, uh, we need to find out. So n is equal to 2. I will get 5 into uh, 3 square, which is uh, 45, minus uh, uh, 3 square, which is uh, 9 minus 1, 8 by 2, which is 4. So 45 minus 4, which is 41. So the first three times uh, are same. So hopefully all the times uh, will be the same. So now we can see why this is such a uh, powerful method because now if you want to find out uh, n is equal to 100 i just need to put 3 raised to 100 and uh, you know uh, and then i i have the formula right 5 into 3 raised to 100 minus 3 raised to 100 minus 1 by 2 right on the other hand if i wanted to find out using the recursion i need to calculate this for each of the 99 steps before also so uh, uh this is uh, extremely useful when we want to find out uh, the only the values 
and, and solve the reconciliations. Get a nice close formula for the nth time.